Okay. So I can explain why I decided to uh, cover this topic instead of uh, other topics because um, from my uh, from my point of view, uh, Slovakia is a small country. You don't have here enterprise companies. I mean, real enterprise companies from maybe twenty thousand computers, fifty thousand computers, etc., where you can use a CCM. So um, I work with SCCM, MDT, and Intune, so I cover uh, device management. So all of my career, I work with devices. I started as help desk engineer, so I was growing from from the uh, from the low technical level. Yeah, I created uh, accounts in Active Directory. Yeah, I installed uh, operating systems manually, like next next finish. I installed drivers, so I know everything about that. Then I was a system administrator. Uh, then system engineer, uh, Microsoft certified trainer. Now I work as uh, solution architect. So I uh, work with Windows 10 technologies, uh, Windows 10 management technologies. So I work with ECCM most of my time uh, because I work with enterprise companies. But I decided to uh, to speak about Windows 10 management, but uh, Windows 10 management, but not from enterprise point of view. Yeah, because if you guys maybe you or your colleagues uh, or your friends and uh, who you know uh, work with ccm i will be happy to come here next time and to provide some interesting uh, interesting sessions around ccm yeah but from my uh, from my experience com uh, enterprise companies use ccm and small companies with i don't know 500 computers uh, do not use because it's very expensive and it's very um, and you need to have a lot of skills, a lot of skills. You need to be very experienced to uh, manage an enterprise uh, product like SCCM. So, is there like a break-even point? Or, I mean, like, for from this number of uh, devices, it's no, no, no. It's it's uh, it's a it's a. Uh, it works historically, you know, when you're a small company, you try to find some solution to manage your devices. If you're a big company, you have to buy CCM. So it's just a historical fact. All of enterprise companies, I worked in companies from uh, 200 computers to 100,000 computers. And they use CCM, yeah? When you say, hey, I have uh, 10,000 devices, it means obviously that you use CCM. Uh, I mean, in uh, Microsoft World. Yeah. Uh, when, you, when you say I manage 50,000 devices, you don't need to explain how you manage your devices. It means that you obviously use a CCM. Yeah. But I decided that um, I decided to come here and do not speak about CCM. Maybe it will be not interesting for you. But what I see, even uh, in tune, is not interesting for you. I mean, we have just uh, five people here, and so what I will cover. Uh, I will not cover uh, Azure Active Directory as as a service. Yeah, I believe you're a bit familiar, uh, as minimum a bit familiar with um, Azure AD. You know what is that? If you if you are not, uh, I can uh, do a brief and uh, brief overview, brief demo. How many? Okay, how many of you work with ACCM? One. And I, I, it means I saw how my colleague works with CCM. <laughs> okay, and how many of you work with uh, Azure AD? Okay, three of you. And with Intune? Okay, so. Um, so we will talk about Azure, uh, Azure Intune and what, we, what you can do with Azure Intune, how you can manage your Windows 10 devices with Azure Intune, and um, I believe we will have enough time to cover also how to provision your Windows 10 devices with Intune Autopilot. Ah, sorry, with Windows Autopilot. So why you should why should you bring your devices in Azure Active Directory? So you know it's a Sometimes it's a challenge, sometimes it's a lot of discussion, sometimes it's a, it's a mandatory, sometimes it is not. So what is Azure Active Directory? It's a 
cloud-based identity service. Yeah, like you have your on-premise Active Directory. I believe all of you experienced with on-premise Active Directory, so I, I cannot cover basic uh, basic stuff. Yeah, and you can do a lot of things with Azure Active Directory. So the most important thing is identity protection and uh, access control. Yeah, when we talk about uh, identity, it means we have accounts, user accounts, computer accounts, and you can manage uh, your accounts, yeah, your computer accounts with Intune. If we have Intune, maybe we can use Autopilot as well. Yeah. So sometimes it's just not an option. If you're I don't know, a big bank with 300,000 computers around the world, maybe Azure AD and uh, um, Intune is not an option for you. It doesn't mean that if you have the service, you have to use it. It doesn't mean, yeah. But if you're maybe a smaller company, I don't know, with 1,000 or 5,000 computers, maybe even 200 computers, maybe you can think about how to migrate your uh, um, your tasks, your daily uh, your daily job, your uh, some management tools from on-premise to uh, to the cloud. How you can save costs. Yeah, so uh, I will. I won't talk about. So I I didn't come here uh, to. I didn't come here to sell you Intune licenses. First of all, yeah, I'm not a sales engineer and I do not work for Microsoft. I didn't come here to talk about marketing because you can go to YouTube. You can find a lot of uh, um, a lot of videos uh, from different Microsoft conferences. Yeah, about modern way, how they call it, modern way or modern management, etc. So we will talk about Azure Active Directory just a bit, yeah, and about how to manage your computers. So I will cover today Azure AD Join. Yeah, Azure AD Join is a uh, state of the device when you allow Azure AD to manage your computer and Azure AD can be join it with your, let's say, join it, yeah, or, or the good word is synchronize it with your local Active Directory, yeah. Uh, so you just go to comp computer settings, you say, hey, I have a Windows 10 device, I want to join this device to Azure Active Directory, and that's it. Yeah. And then you see this account in your Azure Active Directory, and you can manage uh, this computer account. Uh, you can configure synchronization with your local Active Directory or uh, it, it, it's not um, it's not mandatory. If you have a local Active Directory, you can configure synchronization. If you do not have, you can be a cloud, um, cloud only company, if I can say like this, cloud only infra. Yeah, it doesn't mean that uh, if you want to use Azure AD join, you must have a local on-premise infrastructure. When you need to, or when can you uh, use Azure AD Join? First of all, only Windows 10 devices are supported, and I do not have enough experience with Windows Server 2019, so I cannot cover this uh, this topic. But we will talk about Windows 10 management today. Yeah, you have a lot of. Uh, features and a lot of supported scenarios like single sign-on, uh, self-service password reset. If you have a local Active Directory, you can configure password write back. So if, for example, cloud user changes his password, these changes can be synchronized to your local Active Directory, etc., etc. Yeah. Uh, things to know: if you have local Active Directory and you want to migrate, let's say, migrate your devices to Azure AD. The first question is, how can I reproduce my group policy settings? Yeah, and uh, I will show you uh, MDM MAT uh, tool. Yeah, it's a MDM, I don't remember, Microsoft Analyzation Tool or something like that, yeah, which helps you to analyze your current GPOs and how many of them you can uh, map to Intune policies. Okay, let's map demo. What you need to have for map is mat. Sorry, for mat is uh, 
domain joint computer and you need to install uh, remote, um, R -R -SAT, R -SAT, remote server administration tools on this computer. Then you run this utility, uh, they call it MAT, MDM, uh, MIT, Microsoft uh, Analyzation Tool or something like that, whatever. And then this tool generates a report, a report about your policies, about your policies, group policies, yeah, and uh, it's very easy. Green means you can reproduce the same policies in Azure Active Directory. Red means you cannot reproduce these policies in uh, Azure Active Directory. And then you need to, to decide, you need to decide, is it a good way to migrate your computers to Azure Active Directory if you uh, I don't know if you cannot reproduce some GPOs. If you can, it's okay. If you cannot, then you need to decide, can I live without these settings? Is it so important for me or not? Mm. Windows 10 Azure already join. Okay. I recorded this video to just to, it's only one video. Those policies, they will be reproduced, but as, uh, you need to. They will not be reproduced. You need to create them manually. I mean, like they will be not the group policy object. They will be like into device configuration policy. I will show you later okay. how to configure, <laughs> how to create a configure. Uh, we call it in Intune. We call it uh, mm, configuration policies. Yes, Just yeah. a configuration yeah. policies. Yeah. So I will. I will show you everything. Yeah. No worries. So how to join your uh, device to your Azure AD? So no worries, it's the only one recorded recorded demo and all other demos will be live. I just wanted to save a time. So you go to account, account settings, you choose uh, work access or control. As you see, uh, it's a work group computer. I have a local admin account. I click connect. Then I go to join this device to Azure Active Directory. I provide uh, my credentials. My, it's uh, Office, just Office 365 credentials. And this account uh, has, also, um, has also EMS license. EMS license, not only Office 365 license, but EMS as well. Uh, if I want to manage this computer, I need to have I don't need any other license, just E3, let's say, and DMS. Mm -hmm. In order to use uh, Autopilot or manage Windows 10 devices. About Autopilot, uh, I have slides later. What are the requirements for Autopilot here? Yeah, but and, uh, I confirm that I want to uh, make this organization mm -hmm. um, uh, to manage my, my computer. Yeah, I click Join. And in this case, I okay. You, this device is connected. You're all set. So uh, it's Azure AD join at Windows 10 now. It was a workgroup computer. Now it's Azure AD join. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Then I go. Uh, then I okay. Just okay. It's Windows 10 Pro 1809. Yeah. I do a sign out and then I uh, log in with my um, Office 365 credentials and that's it. Questions? Yeah. Yes. Local admin account and uh, this Office 365 account. Mm -hmm. uh, as for licenses, okay. Let, let's check. Let's check what I have. Uh, 
One more time, please. Uh, the computers which are not referring to uh, Azure AD, okay? I can't manage their uh, manage. You, 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 you cannot, you, you can, uh, okay, user 5, for example, yeah, okay, I will answer in a second. Uh, licenses, what I have here, yeah, mm -hmm. for EMS, I enabled everything, yeah, Intune, Azure ATP, I don't know, Azure Information Protection, Azure Active Directory Premium, so I believe you need Azure Active Directory Premium and uh, Microsoft Intune, yeah, and, but, I just have uh, EMS licenses. Uh, as for your question, you have uh, you have uh, as minimum two options. If you want to manage your computers with Intune, you can join your computer to Azure Active Directory, or if you have a, a, a on-premise infrastructure, you can configure hybrid Azure AD, hybrid Azure AD join. It means uh, you have local ID, uh, Azure ID, you synchronize them, you configure some policies, and your computers will be automatically populated in your Azure Active Directory as a hybrid Azure ID computers. And in this case, you can manage them from your group policies and from Intune. If you have just for group computer, you cannot manage. You need to, uh, you, you, okay, let, let's imagine I have a work group, uh, work group computer, how you can manage my computer? Yeah. yeah, I need to, let's say, trust you. Yeah, I need to join my computer to your tenant, to your uh, Azure AD tenant, and then it means I allow you to manage my computer. If you have a local AD, you have Azure ID, you say, hey, I have two accounts. I am a, a global super mega uh, awesome guy. I'm administrator of everything. I want to synchronize everything between these two AD, ADs, local AD, on-premise AD, and Azure AD. And then computers that were um, local, AD, local ID joined, they will be Azure ID joined as well. No computer accounts. Computer accounts. So the, the computer accounts are synchronized to to, uh, to Azure ID. They are not synchronized by default because you want. But if you want make them synchronizable to your Azure ID, you need to install um, Azure ID Connect, it's uh, software, then you, you need to install on a domain uh, computer, on a domain computer, you need to configure this uh, software, and you say, hey, I have a local ID, I don't know, uh, super company dot local, and I have uh, mega super company dot com, my Azure ID. I want to synchronize my, uh, computers or user accounts or both to Azure Active Directory. It can, it can be a synchronization, they, 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 can, they will be Azure ID registered computers. But if you want to do a hybrid ID, you need to configure hybrid ID with the same uh, software, Azure ID Connect, it calls Azure ID Connect. You can download it from uh, Microsoft website, you configure this uh, and you have an option when you go through this wizard, you have an option configure hybrid uh, hybrid ID. My question was, uh, okay. what is mandatory for, for Altium management in, in that hybrid scenario? What is uh, mandatory to, to synchronize? To, to ah, what is, if you have a local ID? Yeah. You have a local ID? Yeah. Okay. And you have licenses? Yeah. EMS licenses, and that's it. You need to have a local ID, you, you need to have a licenses, and then you uh, configure uh, Azure ID Connect. No, but for me, local ID is nothing. It's just terminus. What is it? Your user account or computer account? No, local ID is uh, your uh, identity, let's say, identity system. It's a, as many one domain controller. I mean, when I talk about local ID, I mean you have domain controller, you have user accounts, and you have computer accounts. Okay, uh, that, uh, that's what, uh, what I mean when I talk about local ID. Okay, and you can synchronize 
uh, user accounts from your on-premise, from your local ID to Azure ID, user accounts, with their passwords, etc. So but if you want to do a hybrid ID management, you need to configure it through Azure ID Connect, you need to configure it, and then your computers computers only uh, your computers will be synchronized with your Azure Active Directory and then you create uh, some policies uh, uh, some configuration you can do some configuration from uh, GPOs and some configuration with Intune policies okay uh, let me show you As you see, uh, I have a few computers Azure already joined it, yeah? and I have a server, uh, so, so that's why I do not like uh, low resolution because you need to play a lot of this with that. Uh, okay, it's a Windows. I can I can show you it's a Windows Server 2016. Yeah, it's a hybrid Azure already joined computer from its CCM CCM technical preview from my uh, local Active Directory, yeah, and these three computers I uh, join it to Azure AD, uh, as I showed you, yeah, I go to uh, account settings, I provide credentials, I click next, next, finish, yeah, join, uh, this computer was populated with autopilot, it was automatically uh, Azure AD joined, and this computer was synchronized let's say, synchronized from my local ID to my Azure ID. And now I can create a policy and manage this computer because it's hybrid Azure ID joint computer. Mm -hmm. Could you uh, say us some scenario where the, when there is uh, interesting uh, to, to create this hybrid scenario uh, to manage uh, the environment in both way through the group policy and the engine as well? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did I answer? If, if, if you have some scenario where it is uh, interesting to, to do, is, do it in this way, you know, to manage the, the computers uh, in, the, in this hybrid, hybrid scenario through the group policy and through the item as well, where, where it is interesting? In which scenario? Okay. Uh, for example, it can be uh, for you. It can be a bridge, bridge between your uh, your uh, on-premise. Uh, it can be a bridge between your traditional management and cloud management. For example, I can uh, what I can tell you. Uh, you have a local Active Directory. You have a lot of computers. Uh, uh, act, a local Active Directory joined computers. And you decide that maybe it will be a good way to, for you to move to cloud management. Okay? How you can do a cloud management? In this case, you cannot. You do not see these computers in your Azure AD. What you do, you configure Azure AD Connect. You synchronize, let's say, it's not a synchronize. You synchronize these accounts to your uh, Azure Active Directory and you manage them for some period of time, for one week or for, for one year. It doesn't matter. So you have two management systems and in this way. And then you say, OK, now we have enough experience. We tested a lot of things and we are ready to do a cloud, uh, cloud management only. Yeah. So what you do, you have all of these computers in your Azure Active Directory. You create an autopilot, autopilot um, profile. You deploy this profile to your uh, hybrid Azure AD joint computers. You reinstall your operating systems, and uh, through, uh, when user goes through this OB process, he provides his credentials, and this computer will be automatically Azure AD joined only. It can be hybrid Azure ready join it a bit later. Now it's not possible, but maybe in a few weeks or in a few months, it's, it's in a um, roadmap, in a Microsoft roadmap. And you, after operating system reinstallation, you will have all of your new comp computers 
Azure AD join it. You have everything is in Azure AD, accounts, user accounts, computer accounts, all of your settings, and that's it. So a good understanding is good for uh, the transition time uh, during the, the transition to, to Azure AD uh, only. Uh, it's just an, an example. It doesn't mean that you have to do a hybrid Azure AD join I know, only in this case. I know, but uh, some companies use it as a security precaution. That, for example, there is a synchronized only object to the Azure AD, but you cannot touch them in the cloud. They just need to have them uh, due to some connections or to some other policies and checking. But you cannot manage that from the cloud. You can manage only locally due to security. Okay. So there are multiple ways or solutions how you can approach this. Or the use case. Okay, guys, I have a lot of lot of things to cover, but yeah, it was a good question. So it, it's a real question. Why do I need to use it? And I can't. I cannot answer. You have to use it because blah 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 blah. Yeah. Just example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for example, yeah, it, it was my, my example. It was my example for, uh, for example, okay, example, for example, um, I have a customer who is on a way, he is on his way to move some tasks, uh, management tasks from on premise to cloud only. Yeah, and uh, we had a conversation just, uh, just yesterday and and he, he told me, okay, you know, uh, we want to keep our on-premise infrastructure in headquarter, in he headquarter office, and we want to still want to manage our file services, print services, our domain controllers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we have a lot of offices, a lot of offices uh, with offices just with two or three computers, yeah. And let's recognize a hybrid Azure AD uh, joint scenario, yeah. We will configure Azure AD Connect. We will see these computers in uh, Azure Intune or uh, Azure AD. Then we create policies with Azure Intune. We deploy these policies. Yeah. And we want to manage our branch offices with Intune because sometimes we do not have experienced guy uh, in the local offices. Sometimes a network connection between uh, headquarter and branch is very slow and not stable, but they have a good internet connection or, you know, the different ways. And they told me, okay, let's, let's do some uh, proof of concept for our uh, small offices. We want to manage the, 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 them with Intune, yeah, but we are not ready to, um, we are not ready to move to cloud on the scenario for, uh, for, for our Headquarter computers and etc. etc. What you cannot do with cloud uh, cloud management, you cannot deploy operating systems. Yeah, it's very it's very easy. You cannot upload your 20 gigs uh, reference image to uh, to Intune. I don't know, and then download this uh, reference image by the internet uh, to your computers. You cannot deploy operating systems, but you can do uh, all other Things like application management, uh, policy management, uh, security management, like BitLocker. You can do. Uh, you can collect inventory, software inventory, hardware inventory. Uh, you can manage uh, firewalls, antiviruses, so etc. etc. Okay, if you have Windows 7 and you want to manage Windows 7 computers with Intune, just don't do it. Yeah, because it's a nightmare. I have a lot of years of experience with, uh, we call it Intune Classic or Intune uh, Silverlight. It's a, uh, it's a cloud, a cloud based console on Silverlight and it works uh, so so. And you need to do a troubleshooting every second of your uh, FAT, uh, FAT clients. I call it uh, FAT clients. So if you want to manage your Windows 7 computers with Intune, you can do it. Yeah. Uh, you need to download agent, install on, on your computers, and then you can manage your computers with cloud scenario. If you don't need to manage your Windows 7 computers, you're lucky. You uh, can manage your Windows 10 computers, Mac OS X, iOS, uh, whatever, Android, yeah, with Intune. 
yeah uh, now uh, we call it Azure Intune yeah because it's based on uh, Microsoft Azure so it's Azure Intune yeah it's a console what you need to have just browser and that's it browser and internet you don't need to have servers uh, terabytes of uh, RAM or terabytes of uh, data uh, space etc etc supported uh, operating system so we will talk about MDM yeah uh, so iOS Android and Windows 10 and Mac OS 6 but I didn't I didn't see uh, Mac OS 6 customers in my life I mean Mac OS, Mac OS 6 customers uh, that want to manage their Mac OS 6 with Intune. Aren't they using Intune as a third party? Uh, yes, you, you, you can. G, uh, G, G, GMF? Yes, yes GMF. G, GMF. Yeah, you, you can. I mean, technically, you, uh, you can manage your Mac OS 6 with Intune, with integration with GMF. You can do more, but uh, I just do not work with customers who has Mac OS 6. We, do, we don't have them. Okay, MDM capabilities. What you can do with graphical user interface. Yeah, when you go to Intune, what you can configure with uh, graphical user interface. You can configure uh, some core settings like control panel, um, some security settings like Windows Defender, uh, network proxy, start menu, etc., etc. Not a lot. I, I can't tell you that that you can do the same what you do with uh, group policies now yeah with group policies you can configure a few thousands of settings with uh, Intune you can configure a few hundreds of policies but you can you can do it yeah again again it's very important it doesn't mean that if Microsoft has Intune you must use Intune clear yeah it may be an option for you but it doesn't uh, it doesn't mean that you you must do it and then hey I can't do this I can do this so if you cannot just use your local ID use SCCM use what you need to use and that's it Windows 10 core components management so let me show you what you can do with um, Intune console so you have your computers you join at your computers to Azure AD yeah then you go to Intune, you go to device configuration, you go to profiles, and you can create profile. You need to choose Windows 10, and you have a lot of, uh, you can choose a lot of things you want to manage. Device restrictions, that's uh, what I mean when I say you can configure something with graphical user interface. Yeah, you can configure device restrictions. Then I will cover, uh, or maybe now, okay. You can configure and uh, additional upgrade, for example, from pro to enterprise. You can configure emails, email profiles, Wi-Fi profiles, uh, VPN profiles, and point, uh, and custom profiles. I will co cover it later. You go to properties, go to settings, And you see, I have here some settings and I configured one of 13 settings. Yeah, here I configured NAS and here I configured one of 16 settings. For example, control panel. What you can do, you can block, for example, time and language. When end user goes to control panel, he cannot configure uh, system time or region or time and language. Yeah, he just do not see this in control panel. You can block I don't know, devices or system or whatever you want. Yeah. Display general. Okay, I have three options here. Okay, I block camera. I block removable, uh, removable storage. I block Cortana. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, Cortana is very helpful. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. You, all of you like Cortana. Yeah. Uh, this uh, profile to some, some Windows 10 policy or, or no you just created this profile yeah that's what you have because I saw that you, you got all of uh, these policies am I right here yeah. it's a different policies so, so you, 
when you want to apply to that Windows 10 uh, client. Okay, I, I, I have a policy, yeah. I, I call it just Windows 10 restriction, yeah. I have, we call it device configuration, I mean V, not uh, Microsoft, yeah. I have a device, con create device configuration profiles. I enable it, I, I disable it something, I configure something. So I have a group of settings which I want to deploy. I go to ass assignment and here I choose I hope I can. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Then I choose um, Azure Active Directory group. In this case, I have it. I have two groups. One for autopilot. I will cover it later in the next section. And I have my group of users. So I have my uh, users. In Azure Active Directory, I created some group of settings and I deploy the settings to this group of users. So, so apply that profile to group? Group? Yeah, yes, yes, to Azure AD group. Okay. Like you do with, uh, I don't know, with uh, active, active, local Active Directory and uh, GPOs. Yeah. You create a GPO and you say, hey, I want to deploy this GPO. I want to link this GPO to this organization unit. Maybe you apply to organization unit and here you apply to group. To group only. You do not have some containers like you have. In, you do not have uh, containers like. Um, I just want to understand how it works. Okay. Yeah. So and I choose a group of users or group of devices or. Yeah. When you go to Azure Active Directory, you have here uh, users. It's my users, so some of them are synchronized from, uh, uh, as you see, from Windows Server Active Directory. Some of them are created in Azure Active Directory, so it's only it's uh, Azure Active Directory only users. And then I have uh, groups, and I can create um, assigned groups. It's just an em empty group and I add uh, members manually, computers or users, or I can create a dynamic group. Uh, it will be automatically populated based on the rules. Is there uh, some view or something uh, where you can check uh, the group and which uh, profiles or policies are applied? Are applied? I believe no. Not by group, but by the user or using each and troubleshooting window when you select the user and it, it, it will it will say all the yeah, But no, not for computers. Here you do not have uh, you don't have like assignment profile mm -hmm. profiles on this uh, group of computers. You, you you don't have it. Yeah, but when you have, for example, twenty uh, profiles uh, policies and you've got 100 groups yeah, in uh, Azure AD, uh, there's start to be mess. <coughs> what, uh, what kind of policies are assigned to this group and to this group? I don't know. Can you, uh, you, you can do it in, a, in another way. You go to, a, uh, you go to device configuration, uh, you go to your profile, and you, uh, okay, you choose your profile, that's what I showed you, and you see uh, which computers are, or user accounts are affected. And in this case, I have two uh, user group, uh, one user group and one uh, device, but anyway. But you see it also in the, when you click on the device, uh, as, um, the profiles which are applied in the, from the interview, and you scroll the um, scroll. From my sense that you're right. Okay. Uh, Assignment status? No, no, more to the left. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Uh, devices? No, devices. Ah, devices? Yes, here. And here, if you check the all devices, if you check it from uh, this view, for example. What you want to. Uh, if you, Click and it will see the, uh, the device configuration, the profiles which are assigned to the, the device. 
Uh, the question was uh, about age ready groups. Yeah. Yeah, you, 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 you can see, yes, you can see a list of, yeah, but the question was about age ready group, yeah, if you have a lot of age groups, now I, I don't know the way how, how to check it. Yeah, talking about specific account or uh, specific account, yeah, you, you can, you can, you can check, uh, sorry, you can check uh, what, what uh, is deployed, yeah. but uh, it's not for a group. Okay. Okay, we can deploy Wi-Fi profiles, VPN profiles, email profiles, certificates. What else? Uh, what also you can do with your configurations? You can create device compliance settings. Yeah, you can check devi device uh, health state, device properties, or security uh, system security settings. Uh, how you can combine your device compliance? You can. Combine it with conditional access or just to check a device compliance policies. What I mean, yeah. You go to device compliance. You go to, uh, to policy. And what you can check in this policy. It's not a configuration policy, policy yeah. It's a device compliance policy. You can check device device, uh, device health. For example, you can check if BitLocker is enabled, and you can require to be BitLocker enabled. You can go to device properties. You can check a uh, menu operating system version. In in my case, I check um, 18.03 build as minimum. So if my device will be 17.09 build, it means th this device is not compliant is not compliant to my company compliance policies. Yeah. We can check system security. Like uh, we can require a password to unlock mobile devices. We can require encryption, enable it firewall, enable it antivirus, enable it spyware, enable it uh, Windows Defender uh, anti-malware, etc. Yeah. Then what I, I can do yeah, when I check uh, the status, of device compliance, what I can do, I can just mark this device non-compliant, yeah, or I can send email to end user like, hey, your device is non-compliant, please follow the rules, yeah, or for follow the instructions, please, I don't know, enable BitLocker because I see that uh, BitLocker is not enabled on your device, yeah. Or I can remotely lock the non-compliant device. Not a lot of things what you can do with device compliance. Usually you just check the, st uh, the status. Select groups to include. Come on. Huh. Is it an assigned? Yes, it's assigned. Okay, for example, Windows 10 uh, security. Yeah, what I what I check here. I require a BitLocker, and I require enabled firewall, antivirus, etc., etc. And in my case, what I see, okay, assignments. Okay, it's assigned. It's good. Yeah, I see that my device. It's non-compliant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What it means for me? As minimum, it's an information that I have some non-compliant devices in my company. Yeah. So what I see in this case is that this computer, yeah, Windows 10 Work Group 3, I call it Windows 10 Work Group 3, has enabled anti-spyware, defender anti-malware, antivirus, etc., etc., but encryption of data storage on the device, so the device is not encrypted. A few minutes ago, I told you that you can uh, combine 
let's say, combine Azure AD conditional access and uh, conditional policies. Yeah, device conditional policy. When you check the status of the device and this device is not compliant, you say, hey, you can go from this device to our uh, corporate resources. You can uh, work with our corporate data yeah, from non-compliant device. Antivirus is not enabled. Operating system is not updated. Uh, I don't know who are you. Wh why do you want to work from this computer? With? This device is non-compliant. Yeah? And I, I do not trust you. I do not trust you and your computer. I cannot give you an access to our local resources because it's not secure. You can go from your, I don't know, uh, device with uh, disabled firewall, with disabled antivirus. You can go to a financial report and someone can attack your computer and steal, uh, steal this data. Yeah. So how can I combine it with Azure Active Directory? For example, just a quick example. You can create a lot of different policies for Azure AD conditional access. I won't talk a lot about Azure AD conditional access because we need uh, another uh, another session. It's a big topic. Another session for Azure AD conditional access. But what I want to show you. I say if group of this users or this user, if this user wants to work with this cloud application, with Exchange 365 online, From Windows, from browsers or mobile applications or desktop clients. Okay, we can grant him an access to our Exchange 365 online only if device will be marked as compliant device. Yeah? If device is not marked as compliant, it means uh, to uh, it means to uh, two cases. First case, we cannot manage this device. It's just a work group home computer. We, so this device is not Azure ready joined, and we cannot check the, his uh, health status of this device. Or second uh, second case, this device is Azure ready joined, and uh, we check uh, compliance status, and this device is not compliant. Both cases are not okay for us. We cannot trust this computer. We cannot give this user an access to our Exchange uh, 365 online because he will see all the uh, corporate emails with some sensitive data, etc. So we need to uh, we need to block this access. How it works? I go with this credential, with user 5, yeah. <laughs> uh, I provide a password, I go to my uh, Office uh, 365. Okay, I can open Office 365, then I go to Exchange Online. And it says, sorry, you cannot... Uh, you can not work with application that uh, give you, gives you an access to our corporate data. It means this application is Office uh, Exchange 365 online. You cannot get this access from this computer because we cannot check your device compliance, okay? This compliance status. If you want to work from this computer with these credentials, if you're really I don't know, user, three, uh, user five, yeah, you want to work from this computer with our corporate data? Okay, no problem. Go to settings, accounts, access worker or school. Yeah. Settings, accounts. Access worker school. Add this computer to our Azure ID. Then we will check. Yeah. 
join this device to Azure AD. Yeah. I need to type that I am user 5. Okay, I, I won't go uh, through this process because it's my private laptop. Yeah, I don't need to uh, join this computer even if it's my Azure AD. Yeah, just an example. And then when you uh, add your computer to our Azure AD, it will be Azure AD joined computer. Then we will check compliance policies. And if you're okay, if you uh, I don't know, enable it BitLocker, if you enable it uh, firewall, if you enable it antivirus, etc., etc., we will give you an access to our uh, corporate data. So, for example, if uh, we are working with sensitive data, we can restrict by using Azure Hybrid Join. We can restrict users only for the company devices. With uh, you have users will not be able to connect. You have a few layer. conditions. Oh. Yeah, where is this? Uh, where is the condition? So you can require multi-factor authentication. Yeah. Or even you can block access. Huh? So you say, okay, if user goes from uh, Windows 10 devices, it's okay. But if user goes to Office 365 from Android or from iOS, we just block access. We don't want to check something. Yeah. We don't want to check compliance status. We just want to block access from uh, comp uh, for from um, mobile devices and, and and that's it yeah we can uh, we can require also we can require hybrid Azure AD joint device yeah we can require approved client apps we can require MFA or we can require just uh, this device to be marked as compliant device clear uh, does Microsoft install something uh, on the device the no. Join or no, in this, uh, when you do Azure AD join and when you do uh, device management, I mean modern device management uh, through Azure AD and through Intune, you just work with built in MDM agent. You don't need to install something, you don't need to configure something, you don't need to enable something, it's just a built in functions okay. in, in operating system. Yeah. You cannot go to I don't know to control panel and see this uh, Intune agent. You can do it with uh, Fat Client if you work with Windows 7, for example. Yeah, you can uh, have a real installation files. You can install them. You can uninstall them. Uh, you can see real files on your hard hard drive. Yeah, it will be your Intune uh, Fat Client. But when we talk about modern management and Azure AD join, uh, you do not have some kind of uh, agent what you can see you have you have an agent, but it's a uh, native agent. It's a built-in agent. It's not it's not a software Okay Good So you can uh, Restrict access to your uh, corporate data or to any other applications Okay, I show you. Okay Another interesting topic is configuration service providers. Configuration service providers uh, is an interface to work with settings on the device. Yeah. And the settings map to registry case or files. How it look how it looks like. It looks a bit difficult yeah, for the first view, but if you have a, a good Google skills or I don't know what you use, yeah, uh, you can find some uh, CSP, what will be use, useful for you? Why I talk about that? You cannot. Uh, it's it's an, obviously it's a fact. Yeah, I I just want to say you're true. You cannot manage a lot of things from graphical user interface. Okay, when you go to Intune, you create a policy. You see a limited uh, a limited numbers of settings, but it doesn't mean that uh, you cannot manage another settings. Just go to Google. Yeah, sorry, we are in Microsoft Office, but I say but yeah. Bing. <laughs> yeah, but I do not work for Microsoft, so I can say whatever I want. Okay, you go to Google and you say, hey, I want to manage extensions on my uh, for my Edge browser. With graphical user interface, you cannot manage extensions. You just do not have these options. You, you cannot configure allow extensions or block extensions for Edge when you go to uh, Intune console. But you can configure CSP 
yeah and you you have information in Microsoft documentation which operating systems are supported in this case you need as minimum 1607 yeah pro enterprise education and then you configure the settings let me show you what custom profile means uh, no, we will talk about XML a bit later. No, let me show you device device configuration profiles, custom profiles. Yeah. Okay, guest account. I always show this example because it's it's very easy to understand. So I cannot manage guest account with my. Uh, device restriction profile type when i go to when i go to graphical user interface i just cannot manage graphic uh, guest account by I, but i can do it with csp yeah i have a good google skills yeah. and uh, what i can manage yeah i can block guest account yeah, in this case, it's uh, uh, this option calls account enable guest accounts and value is zero. It means we just have to, we do not enable uh, guest account. It means we disable guest account. And the second option is rename guest account, and this is a value. So in my case, it will be a blocked renamed guest account just for security purposes. Clear what I want to, to do or not? No? Let me show you, maybe it will be more clear. Uh, a, a little bit slowly. Ah, I thought I am slow, uh, I need to be a bit a little slowly. Sorry, I cannot because we don't have enough time. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. And you see, it's my guest account. It's my guest account. I cannot, again, one more time, I cannot manage guest account with graphical user interface. I just don't have this option. I can I cannot click disable or enable or rename, but I can do it with configuration service provider. Yeah, I go to Microsoft documentation. I found this option. What I can configure? Yeah, and I configure it. And and you see in the description, it's a built-in account for guest access to the computer. Yeah, it's disabled, it, and it's renamed. Yeah. So just an example. Okay, another example. What I can show you. Um, start menu. Okay, update settings. I can manage software updates settings on my Windows 10 Azure AD joint computers. I can manage in some way uh, how to uh, deploy this software updates. I mean, updates for operating system. But I cannot manage with graphical user interface a day for installation. In my case, I want uh, to install updates only on uh, Saturdays. I just want why 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 I can't. Yeah. I cannot manage this device with graphical user interface. I cannot go and check, hey, install updates only on Wednesday, uh, only on Saturdays. But I can do it with uh, on my URI with uh, this with this interface. Yeah, I say, hey, I want to configure update uh, settings, and the name of the setting is schedule install date, install day, and value seven because value zero is install updates the whole week. Yeah, computer receives uh, an update and computer installs these updates. It means any day of the week. Value one means Monday, value two means uh, Tuesday, when uh, value three means, no, what? No. Okay, just, just, uh, uh, <laughs> I can promise that value 7 is Saturday. Value 7 is Saturday and value 8 is Sunday. Yeah? And I allow to install updates only on Saturdays. Again, just an example that it doesn't mean if you uh, do not see this option in uh, your Intune console, it doesn't mean you cannot, this op uh, you cannot manage this option. You can, but maybe in another way.
Okay, a few words about um, ADMX, ADMX backed uh, policies. If you have a group policies in administrative templates, I believe if you work with local Active Directory, you uh, you manage them. Okay, and you can go to this physical file with extension <coughs> .admx. Uh, you open this admx file with uh, I don't know Wix XML viewer or with Notepad++ or whatever you prefer, and then you need to do some manipulation with this file to take some parts of uh, XML to edit these parts of XML, and then you deploy these policies with Intune. Just to let you know that you can manage it. Yeah. Okay, MDM available device actions. What you can do with your device? You can uh, restart your device, you can wipe your device, retire, you can um, sync policies obligatory right here, right now, you just click, and it means that this computer uh, will download a new policy from Intune because you want to test something. Um, you can scan. Uh, you can run a scan for Windows Defender, quick scan or full scan. You can ask Windows Defender to update signatures and not and other things. Okay, I will skip it, guys. PowerShell scripts again a new feature that was released maybe a few months ago. I do not remember, but it's quite fresh. What you can do with PowerShell scripts, you just can deploy them. Okay? Deploy PowerShell scripts. You can deploy them. Uh, how? How? Uh, I have a demo for you. Yes, yes, yeah. That's what I'm talking about, yeah. Now I'm talking about only cloud. I mean, the whole my presentation is uh, Azure ready joint computer. I'm not talking about hybrid uh, scenario. I have a few PowerShell scripts, just the simplest PowerShell scripts what I could find. Yeah, for example, this one. Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's two lines PowerShell script. <laughs> yeah, 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 if I can download a PowerShell script from 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 the internet, yeah, I am a, you can say that I am a PowerShell guru. Yeah, why not? Yeah, it's a PowerShell script, the simplest. Yeah. In other, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe a bit complex. Wow. Yeah. So what I say? I say, hey computer, go to 7zip.org to a public website, public web server. Yeah. Download this file. Download this, save this file and see Windows temp and run this file with this argument. Yeah. So it's what it was a workaround because uh, because a few weeks ago Win, uh, Windows 32 apps deployment was a challenge was a challenge and uh, one of the workarounds was to have uh, your own or oh, maybe another um, web server. You could create a folder on your web server to. Copy all required files for a software um, for application installation, and then you create a PowerShell script, the simplest like, like, like that. And you say, "Hey, computer, go to this web server, download all of these files, save them locally, and run them." Yeah, because previously you uh, and even even now you cannot you cannot choose more than one file. Yeah, more than one file for installation. And previously, you could install MSI only. You, you could not install exe files. And we had a few workarounds. Now you can install exe files. I will show you later. Yeah, what you can do now, uh, what you what, what you could do a few weeks ago and a few years ago, you create a PowerShell script and you say, hey, I have exe file setup.exe in a some on a some web server. 
go to this web server, download this exe file, save this exe file locally, and run it with some arguments like k, 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 s, or silent, or quiet, or q, or qn, or whatever. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So how to deploy PowerShell scripts? You go to Microsoft Intune, I believe it's device configuration, PowerShell scripts. You want to add new PowerShell script, just provide the name of the script. You click Browse, you choose this PowerShell script, and you assign this PowerShell script to a group of users, and that's it. Yeah, like I did here, for example, make directory. directory. I can show you the Simon status, yes, it. I assign the script make uh, directory, this, this one. Yeah. We have four succeeded, one error. Okay. Okay, let me show you. I believe we have some settings for that. So if you if this user doesn't have administrative permissions, you choose here an option no, yeah, and this script, as you see, runs in system content. Okay. Okay. Clear. Good. Administrative templates. It's a sort of ADMX group policies in the cloud. Yeah. It was released just uh, maybe again two or three weeks ago during Microsoft Ignite. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, uh, this feature is available for all uh, Intune tenants, but for me it's, it's enabled. Yeah. You cannot manage again, you cannot manage thousands of settings like you do with group policies now, but you can manage hundreds of settings uh, from the Intune console. You can manage Windows 10 core components, Internet Explorer, Office 2016, and OneDrive. What you need to do, you need to go to Device Configuration, Administrative Templates, you need to create your uh, own template, then you go to Settings, and you see all of available settings you can manage. Yeah. If I want to manage OneDrive, for example, I see a list of the settings. I don't know. Do you know if there is uh, any kind of tool which uh, converts the GPOs and uh, creates automatically this? Uh, no, you cannot, you cannot upload your templates. No, That's what I explained to you a few minutes ago. You can do it in uh, ID, uh, with ADMX based policies. You cannot export your ADMX and upload it to your Intune. You can copy your ADMX file, unpack it with uh, XML editor, mm -hmm. do some uh, black magic, some manipulations. You have document like this on a Microsoft website how to convert your ADMX policy to Intune format. Then, yeah, yeah. then you can upload it. No, not upload, yeah, but uh, yes, yes, yes. you can. As for administrative templates, you cannot uh, configure something. But I mean, you can configure, yeah, but you cannot upload your own uh, ADMX files. Yeah. So you can, uh, by default, uh, the settings is in not configured state. Yeah. You can disable it or you can enable it. You click OK and you assign the settings to your computers. Yeah, it looks like a group policy, right? Yeah, if you're familiar with group policies, you know how to do it. Yeah. You go to another setting. Mm -hmm. 
and it takes some time. Yeah, again, disabled, enable it. You have some policies you need to provide some uh, information. In this case, you can just enable or disable or just leave it with uh, non-configured status. Okay, Windows 32 software distribution. What you can do in the past? You could deploy uh, MSI files on your Windows 10 computers. You could deploy links on uh, links from Microsoft Store. And you, and I believe that's it. Yeah, uh, MSI and and links. If I'm not, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And you had a workaround. As I explained to you a few minutes ago, you had a workaround with PowerShell. Yeah, you create a PowerShell script. You have your files on your web server, and then you say, "Hey, deploy this PowerShell." And when PowerShell script is applied, you go. You need to go to a web server. You need to download files, etc., etc. What you can do now? Yeah. First of all, a new um, file extension MSIX is supported by uh, Intune. Now you can deploy not MSI only, but MSIX files. Yeah, you, you can uh, download MSIX packaging tool from Microsoft website and repackage your application to a new format. But also, you can deploy Windows 32 applications. It means XE applications or MSI applications or application which consists of hundreds of uh, files. What you need to have, you need to have Windows 10 1607. Uh, and of course, this computer needs to be uh, Azure ready joined or hybrid Azure ready uh, joined computer. When I talk about uh, Windows uh, new feature, Windows 32 application, what I mean? Yeah, Microsoft now supports in the Intune a new, I cannot say it's a new way, it's a, it's a new container. It's a, it's a new archive with new extension dot Intune Win. Yeah. You need to uh, have your content here, you know, like files in different folders. Uh, it uh, can be a setup.exe, setup.msi, or whatever you want to uh, deploy. Yeah. And you need to pack these files uh, to, to a new container. And then you upload this the only one file to your Intune and you can deploy this file. Yeah, Because previously, if you had a setup.exe, you could not install this application with Intune. Yeah. How it works. Yeah. First of all, let me show you how to deploy applications. As you see, I have a lot of different applications for different platforms like iOS, Android, or even Windows. Yeah. You need to choose an application type yeah, for iOS, for Android, for Windows 10. It's a uh, Microsoft Store application. You just can copy-paste a link to a cloud application from Microsoft Store. You can deploy v uh, Office 365 suite. Or you can deploy MSI and MSI X, yeah. Or you can deploy Windows 32 Preview. As for MSI X and MSI, as you see, type is Windows MSI line of business application. Yeah. So if I want, for example, to to deploy just MSI file, I go to line of business application. I need to browse this file, and that's it. And then deploy this file. If I want to deploy Windows 32 application, for example, setup.exe, yeah. again, I need to uh, choose this file, upload, and then, uh, as you see, I need to configure a lot of settings. Let me show you how it works. So Microsoft released a tool which calls Intune Win32 App Packaging Tool. It's just 49 kilobytes application. Yeah, you can download it from GitHub. You can Google it.
up, okay. And application asks me uh, the source folder of my application. I have WinRAR, for example. Yeah, the latest one of what I what I downloaded yesterday for a demo. I say, hey, I have a source folder here. Specify the setup file. It's it will be my setup file. Again, I cannot. It's just not supported. Yeah, I cannot take exe file and upload it to Intune and then deploy to my computers. But I, can, but I can prepare the same file in a different container. Yeah, I say, hey, my setup file is win, winrar, la la la, dot exe. And I need to specify the output folder. It, it can be the same output folder. I press enter and that's it. So as you see, the size is a bit less yeah, than the original file. So you can say it's a new container or you can say it's a new type of uh, archive, up to you. But I have a new file in tune win file, okay? And I can upload this file, it's application type Windows app win32 in preview mode. I go to my folder. If I choose exe file, for example, it's, a, it's not correct. But if I choose Intune Win, say, oh, OK. No, if just a few seconds and I will explain. Okay, it will be a WinRAR x64 like that. Okay, description description will be the same. Package publisher. Okay, it will be a WinRAR. I can provide a developer owner information. I can select a logo for this file. Just click OK. I don't care. It was an app. OK. Then program. And I need to specify install command. Install command, it's a parameters. Like you set up your files, like you install your application from CMD. If you can install your application from CMD, with silent mode, you can do the same with Intune, like with ECCM, yeah, or with group policies or whatever you use for application deployment. You say, hey, I have a setup file. In my case, it will be a WinRAR. Exe file. And argument is S. I'm not sure it will work with this release. Okay, I don't care because with previous uh, versions, I used WinRAR for demos uh, uh, every month, every year, and <laughs> in, in all of my CCM installations, I use WinRAR with uh, argument S. I believe it will work in this case. Uh, if it's MSI file, it will be automatically populated. The settings uh, install command and uninstall command, it will be taken from uh, MSI file. Yeah, but in this case, it's exe file. Intune doesn't know, uh, doesn't have information about WinRAR, so you need to do it uh, manually. I don't know, to be honest, what is an uninstall command for WinRAR. Let's say uninstall. Let's say it will be uninstall argument. Yeah, it may be a fake, yeah, but who cares? Requirements. Operating system. 64 bits. Minimum operating system. 1607, for example, and I will leave uh, it's empty disk space required, physical memory, uh, logical processors, minimum CPU, but you can populate this information. Detection rules. What detection rules means? We will check, yeah, as the same as uh, 
with SCCM, if you work, uh, if you have an experience with SCCM, you need to provide uh, detection rules. It means system will check if application is already installed, following the rules. If application is installed, we will not reinstall this application. But if application is not installed, it means we need it, yeah, and we will install this application. Rules format. We can check uh, if this application is installed by running some custom de detection script, yeah, or we can manually uh, uh, we can manually configure rules. We have a few types of rules. We can check MSI code, we can check file or folder, and we can check registry. In my case, I can check file, for example, I can provide a pass and now see, see what file. Okay. File or folder. Just to Okay, date created, file or folder exist. What does it mean? If on a C drive I have a winrar.exe, it means that this application is installed. Of course, it's fake, yeah? It's just for a demo. In real case, you will check and now C program files uh, winrar, winrar.exe. If this file exists, yeah, uh, um, we can also check the uh, date creation or uh, size or version of this file. Yeah, maybe we have a previous version of WinRAR and we want to reinstall on the latest version. Yeah, I will check. So if WinRAR.exe exists on a C drive, we will not install this application. But if it does not exist, we will install WinRAR. Okay, I click OK. OK, return codes. You have some pre-populated uh, return codes, but you can remove them and add your own. Okay. If installation progress, uh, installation progress will uh, give me back a return code zero, we will think that application was installed successfully. My application is not ready yet, yeah, because my application that, uh, return codes are returned to iTunes management. Yes, to iTunes. Yes. Okay, we need to wait a bit. Okay, then I need to assign this application. Yeah. Add group is not um, enabled. You see it's in grayed out because application is not yet created. So I c it's not yet uploaded to Intune service from my computer. So that's why I cannot uh, deploy this application. Mm, not yet, okay. But anyway, then when application is ready, do I have here an application like that? Okay. Preview. Okay, uploading. You see? Now we are uploading this just three megabytes uh, application. Yeah, it's 2.8, so this one. Yeah, we upload this this application to Intune in this format. I don't know why it works like that, but what can I say? And then when our application is ready, we choose a group of users or computers. Yeah. We say, hey, it will be available application, so you can go to company portal and you can click you can click install and that's it. Or it will be required. So we, we do not care if you want to have this application or if you do not want. You just have to have this application. Yeah. Okay, WinRAR upload finished. Good. It means now I can deploy this application. I can go to assignment. I can add group. 
I want to make it available for my users. Mm, select group to include. Okay, that's it. Let me check on. I don't know if it. How much time will it take with our internet connection speed? But why not to check? We can we can check the result uh, maybe after a lunch. Oh, not a lunch. Sorry, after a uh, break. We don't have a lunch. So I have a company portal. Yeah, it's a. Um, Pre-installed application. I can go to app, and I see my applications. I do not see here uh, WinRAR because I need to download a new policy yeah, from a computer, so I need to wait. Or I can do it right now. I can manually sync uh, a new application from Intune. Yeah. Just for a test for a demo, I click sync. Yeah. And we will see how much time we need. And if I want to install an application, yeah, I go to my application, I click install, and that's it. So that's how that's how uh, company portal works. Yeah, it's uh, your also um, application catalog. Yeah, let's say um, we have an analog uh, analog in uh, CCM. We have an application catalog in System Center. Yeah. It's quite quite the same. Yeah, we can have in this application information about my profile. Yeah, who am I? Yeah. Okay. We have information about my devices and application about my uh, information about my applications. And let's check it a bit later when policy will be downloaded. Okay. 